in the tree-shaded courtyard, behind stone walls and near the well, Israeli art saw its beginnings. One hundred years have passed since the day Shlomo Zalman Dov Schatz, better known as Professor Boris Schatz, arrived in Jerusalem to realize the extraordinary dream of Bezalel. The twin buildings which arose in the heart of Jerusalem outside the walls in 1906 bore a new historic sign, the Bezalel Academy for Arts and Crafts. In 1866, 40 years before Betzalel opened its doors, Boris Schatz was born in Lithuania. A precocious, energetic child, he was soon banished from the Cheder classroom. As Schatz put it, hard as I tried not to think sinful thoughts, they kept creeping back into my mind, especially images of my beautiful cousins. I began painting, and I loved portraits, in which I find, to this day, the most interesting material for artistic expression. At the age of 23, Schatz traveled to Paris with his first wife to study sculpture and painting, earning his living as a wrestler and boxer. Schatz wanted to reinvent the concept of Jewish art, Until that time, the basis of that art was biblical objects and religious images. His inspiration came from events and images from the shtetl, imbued with new symbols and national messages. One of Schatz's best-known works, Mattathias the Hasmonean, disappeared in mysterious circumstances that stirred many imaginations. Only a copy of the head survived. Mattathias was displayed in the International Exhibition in Paris, where it left a powerful impression. Among the viewers were the advisors of King Ferdinand of Bulgaria. The king immediately appointed Schatz his court sculptor, and the artist became one of the founders of the Academy of Art in Sofia, for which he is remembered to this day. In the Sofia Academy, a native culture was born based on the country's traditional folk art and religious icons. Later, Schatz would foster a similar process at the art academy he was to establish in Ottoman Palestine. Vienna, 1903. Boris Schatz met the father of modern Zionism, Theodor Herzl. In a visionary, stirring speech, Schatz described his dream of Bezalel, a Jewish school for the arts. A full hour I lectured him. Herzl wanted to know everything in detail, and when I finished speaking, I waited with a pounding heart. Good, then we'll do it, Herzl said softly and decisively, and then he asked me, what will you call your school? Betzalel, I answered, after the first master craftsman, builder of the sanctuary in the desert. Yes, a sanctuary in the desert, Herzl repeated, and his fine, gentle eyes focused on a distant horizon, as if he knew he would not live to see the fulfillment of this dream. In 1911, Betzalel had been operating already for five years and the twin buildings bustled with hundreds of students, half of them less than 19 years old. Schatz had recently married the art critic Olga Pevsner and is seen here welcoming the British filmmaker Maury Rosenberg and his wife. The couple had come to Palestine to produce one of the first films made in the country. Schatz, dressed in his customary white galabia and accompanied by a pet peacock, guides his guests on a tour of the more than 30 departments he has established in Bezalel. The bond existing between the professor and his students is evident here, as students demonstrate Schatz's teaching that a healthy body made for a healthy creativity. In the background, one can hear the music played by the Bezalel band, which echoed far and wide throughout the somewhat gloomy sparseness of Jerusalem of the early 20th century. In those years, most of Schatz's energies were drained by administrative work, fundraising and mounting dozens of exhibitions abroad. Only later would he be free to return to painting and sculpture. Crisis, 1915. 
The Berlin Jews who financed Betzal El from the outset wanted it to function as a profit-making enterprise. Meager earnings and harsh criticism of the character and aims of the academy spurred the Germans to withdraw their support. For 13 further years, new students filled its classrooms, but Betzal El did not recover from the economic blow it had been dealt. During the First World War, the Turks expelled shots from Jerusalem. He wrote, Jerusalem Rebuilt, a utopian novel about the city in the year 2018. The book is full of visionary, imaginary inventions such as a telephone with picture images and an underground railway system traversing Jerusalem. The novel's hero, Betzalel ben Uri, stands with shots on the roof of the art school from which, as the professor prophesied, it would no longer be possible to see the then prominent Tower of David near Jaffa Gate. 1929. Betzalel, now bankrupt, closed its doors. Against doctor's orders, Schatz sailed to the United States to sell artworks and raise funds. In 1932, Boris Schatz died in Denver, Colorado. He was buried in Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives. Boris Schatz's children, Metzalel and Zahara, were born into the artistic heart of Jerusalem. As mature artists both developed innovative styles. Zahara made daring works from plastic, a transparent industrial material which had never been used in art before. Metzalel, who became known as Lilik, created a kind of utopian design unlike anything that had been done in the country at the time. After Boris Schatz's death, his widow Olga and his two children left the country, settling for long periods in Paris and then in the United States. Betzalel, a sculptor and painter, married Louise, whose sister was later to marry the writer Henry Miller. Into the Nightlife, a book printed in a limited edition of 800 copies, was a collaborative work of the two brothers-in-law. Miller was the writer, Lilik was the illustrator. Louise Schatz, born in Canada and raised in California, was transparent, elusive, dreamy, yearning, clear as a bell, and distinct as a glistening spider web, according to Henry Miller, in the introduction to a catalog of her works. Her paintings were principally watercolors, creating a poetic, delicate, feminine world. Louise, like Lilik and Zahara, saw applied art as a fertile field for invention and creativity. In 1951, the Schatz family returned to Jerusalem, to their house at number 3 Betzalel Street. There they initiated a workshop in applied art called Yad, and were among the founders of the Ein Hod Artists' Village near Haifa. Their works decorated the luxury liners of Israel's Zim shipping lines, as well as the gates of the President's official residence, the eternal light at the Soldiers' Memorial Building in Jerusalem, and the railing at the Western Wall. Schatz's widow Olga died in 1969, followed in 1978 by Lilik. Shortly afterwards, Zahara returned to Israel from a fruitful creative period in the United States. Zahara Schatz was a Jerusalem princess, a princess of the Schatz royal line. In her art, her personality and life, she exemplified this astonishing family. Like the other members of the family, she was uncompromising in her individualism, curiosity and adventurousness, as she was in her ties to Jerusalem and to Israel. Her prolific output, especially in environmental sculptures in Israel and abroad, included the six-branched menorah at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial, as well as jewelry and decorative objects. In 1955, when she was only 39, she was awarded the Israel Prize for painting and sculpture. This was the first of many international prizes she was later to receive, including that of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Zahara was the last of the Schatzes to live at number 3 Betzalel Street. Her last years were devoted to improving the status of artists in Israel, particularly in Jerusalem, thus closing a circle opened by her father at the same place a century earlier.